So this is what we've got so far. Um, these 33 lines of code on the left look like this on the right, although it doesn't look like it like I think it should look. I can see a, a section here and then a page two, but it doesn't look like a page two. So we're going to do that in just a moment. But let's do a little sidebar here on, uh, on the concept of commenting your code. What we've been writing here so far, all of this code that we've written has been the, in, in the service of the web browser rendering it to display it somehow on screen. So all of these tags that we've written have been interpreted by the web browser and processed and shown to us in the web browser. We can also and should also write codes, uh, comments in our code. We should comment our code, meaning little notes for ourselves. What this does, or what we need to fix, or what we will do in the future. Just notes, and then the web browser will ignore those. So with our 33 lines of code, perhaps we don't have very much to comment, maybe we're understanding it pretty well, but once we've got 3300 lines of code, that's much harder to understand. So we will see throughout this class, we will have three ways to comment. First, we're going to start to look at the <coughs> HTML method of commenting. Then later, we'll look at the CSS method of commenting, and then the JavaScript method. They're all slightly different, but it's the same concept. Whatever we write within the comment tags will be ignored by the web browser. So let's say we want to add a comment here that explains that the section tag is for dividing our screen, our app, into different screens. So before the section tag, I'm going to give myself a new line here. And the comment tag in HTML is a weird looking one, but it does have a pair. It's greater than, I mean it's the less than symbol. It's the exclamation point, dash, dash. As soon as I write that, everything turns green, because now suddenly everything's a comment. Suddenly I've deactivated my whole project. Therefore, I need to close the tag. I'll add a couple of enters here, and then I'll do its closing tag, which is a weird one, without a slash, dash, dash, greater than. So this one's one of the unique ones that plays by its own rules. It is the opening and the closing angle brackets, but then it's an uh, exclamation point, two dashes. Notice there's no spaces between any of that. What's that? Yes. So what we're doing here then is closing the comment tag with dash dash slash. I'm sorry, just dash dash greater than no slash necessary. If you want, if it really torments you that there's no slash, you could put it there. It doesn't matter. It'll be ignored. It's a comment. But that's the official opening and closing comment tags. And then I can write anything I want here. Anything I want here. And the web browser will ignore it. And I can write multiple lines. I can write multiple lines. So this is to write a comment. This is to explain to ourselves or the other people in the team or yourself in the future when you come back to this project a month later what this does, what this means, or a to-do list or whatever you want. So I'm just gonna write here a section and it's gonna ignore this. Even though that's a valid HTML tag, it's gonna be ignored because it's in the comment block. Section is for making multiple screens in my app. I can write as many comments as I want, just about anywhere in the code. I'm going to add another one over here. Header is for the top content, like a navbar. I wrote this as a multi line comment, technically, because I divided the opening and closing tags, but oftentimes you also see them like this. I could do this 
at the end of h1, I could add it here. It doesn't have to be on its own line. I'm going to do it like this. At the end of the line, line 16, there I will write uh, h1 is for the number one heading. Notice what I did there. On one line, this is also valid because I'm starting and ending the comment tag. It doesn't have to be broken up like this. It can be on one line. And I put it at the end of that line. Perhaps that might be a, a useful way for you to write your comments. Or maybe a useful way is in its own line like that. What, I, what won't work, I believe, is for you to, uh, to, to force the comment within, within a tag. Um, I believe this will be problematic. See, I've got the comment right here before the closing of that tag. I don't recall if that works or not, but I try to avoid that. Don't mix the comment tag with a regular tag. Either put it at the end of the line, the start of the line, before or after a line, but I would not mix it in with, with existing valid tags. So I'm not going to go in and, and add comments to everything we've done here uh, just yet. Well, maybe just the semantic ones. I think I'll do that. Uh, I explained section, header, article. This is a good one to comment, actually. Um, let's see, article. <coughs> is for our main body content. Article is for our main body content. Anything within the body tag is sort of like the main part of the app. That's what, this is what I'm saying about it possibly not being named the best article. And then you can decide what's a good definition for what is footer. Footer is for content on the bottom of the screen. So comments are useful for you to document your code, to remind yourself of stuff, to communicate with your team members on a project, to leave yourself notes of things that you need to fix. What's also useful is if you're going to be sharing your work with other people, if you're going to open source your project, for example, adding a comment block about the project is also a good idea with your name, your contact information, your website, how do people reach you if they want to help you improve your code or have questions with your code. So what I mean is I'm going to add this at the very bottom before I close my HTML document. So right at the bottom before the close of HTML. is optional. I'm just showing you this could be something useful. So you don't need to write that, but I'm writing this here also for myself because when I work on this and maybe make changes later on, uh, I could look at the date and see that's the last time I worked on it. Or I could do something also like version 0.2 because it's the second day of class, let's say. Whatever version numbers you want to write. When we get to CSS, we can write comments there too. 
they look slightly different than uh, these comments. And then JavaScript can have their own type of comment too, although it's more akin to CSS than HTML. And so comments are good. Uh, I, I, I do that as much as I can within my own code also, even though if I'm the only one working on my app, I make my own comments there if I'm trying to solve a problem or a reminder for me to look something up to fix this issue. So comments are good. Any questions about comments? So if you... Uh, one little issue though about comments is that as we work in the class together and if you're following exactly as I'm following along, I have a certain amount of line numbers. I have 47. So if I say, let's go back to line 37, but you added extra comments, you give yourself two or three lines of comments, your, your code is going to be a little bit off from mine. Not that it's a bad thing, but when I say go to a certain line and yours is not there, you'll have to just hunt around a little bit to find your section. Because the comments do take up a line number if you use them that way. All right, so what we're going to do then is upgrade our project to be able to behave more like a real app with a first screen and a second screen, uh, an index screen and a, a contact screen and all of that, so that it actually makes sense that this is page two content. This is page one. And the way we're going to do that is use this framework called jQuery Mobile. So jQuery Mobile is a JavaScript library that gives us the ability to quickly create visual content or interfaces with minimal code. We will write literally one little line and this will suddenly convert into a full page. In the old days, I would have to write a lot of CSS to get that to work. The, the CSS that we touched on last time, remember we did text align center, and it aligned to the center of the screen. But if I wanted to make other alignments or place something below something else and stagger this to that, I'd have to write more CSS. Something like jQuery Mobile allows us to do more with less code. I believe even the motto of, of the whole jQuery project is uh, do more with less, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it is write a little bit of code in JavaScript to then do a lot. That will automatically get translated into a lot of HTML and CSS for us, in short. So in order for this to work, we need to tap into, we need to load the jQuery mobile library so that these commands that we write will have a meaning. Not commands, but this code that we write. So what we're going to do is we're going to load the jQuery mobile library. This is a collection of like a thousand lines of code that the jQuery mobile team put together and put out for free on the internet and all we need to do is connect to it basically and then write the, the code and our project will behave like a real kind of app. So we're going to back up and we're going to write this over... Well, let's add it actually... We can add it in a couple of spots, but we'll add it at the bottom. I'll explain why a little later. Uh, right above the body tag. Mine is line 40. So after your section of page 2, before the end of body, I'm going to write the script tag. This one I'll keep it on one line. We could break it up into two. Well, actually, let's do it this way. This is valid and the other way is valid too, but let's just keep, let's do this just to keep things consistent for the moment and then we'll change things. Never mind, let's not write it here. Let's write it at the header, at the head. Let's go delete what you just wrote, or undo it. Let's go back to the top and head. 
and it'll kind of make a little more sense at this point, and then we'll see later why we might write it at the bottom, but for the moment we'll write it at the top. We'll go back to head, so make sure you're in the head section, and then we'll write script. In the old days, a few years ago, when HTML5 wasn't the dominant language, we would write this script tag, and then we would write type, don't write this, we would write type uh, text slash JavaScript. We would say that the type of script that we're adding up here is JavaScript. But because now, jo uh, because now HTML5 is the dominant language, this is assumed. As soon as you add a script tag, it's assumed that it's JavaScript. So we can save a few bytes here. What we're saying here is we're going to tap into some JavaScript. What we are going to do is add an attribute, however. This does not go between the tags. <coughs> not between the tags. It's an attribute, so that means it goes inside of the tag. Notice the purple. It's inside of the, the first script tag. src equals quotes. We've seen src equals quotes before for something. Images. IMG for images. So here we're saying, okay, we're going to use a JavaScript file. Here's its source. And we can go load it from the official jQuery mobile website. We don't have to download it to our project. Later on we will, because what if the server breaks, then we lose the connection to that file and then our app looks terrible. So for the moment we'll connect to the to their server, but later on we'll have a, a local version of it. And here we're going to write the link over to the jQuery mobile files. It's gonna be a lot of writing, but we'll do it the hard way the first time, and then after that we'll save some time with some shortcuts. HTTP slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash one point eleven point two point min m i n point j s So the source, this is the file, reading from the right to the left. It's a JavaScript file. It's version 1.11.2 of, of the file. And it's up on the jQuery.com server in their code subdirectory. Next line. We'll write the script tag again. That needs a source again. And we're going to write an address again. This one's a little longer. But here we're connecting to an online resource, a file on a server, so HTTP. colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile slash one point four point five slash jQuery point mobile is gonna run off my page here dash 1.4.5.min.js So this first part's the same as before, right? Code.jQuery.com. Same. Then it deviates. Slash mobile, slash 1.4.5, slash jQuery point mobile dash 1.4.5.min.js. So as I've said previously, 
the three pillars of our project are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML for the structure, CSS for the design, JavaScript for the interactivity and other advanced features. So jQuery and jQuery Mobile both end in a .js. These are both JavaScript. These are both files full of JavaScript commands that were developed by a global team of web designers and developers. And now we have the ability to use all of this code that they have published to the world. First there was jQuery, which was a library of JavaScript that instead of writing, let's say, 20 characters, you could accomplish the same thing in seven. You write that character, that command, which is only seven characters long, and then it gets translated, basically, to the 20 character original command. That's the purpose, basically, of jQuery. And it's evolved and grown and become more powerful and popular. An offshoot of that, or building on top of that, is jQuery Mobile. Another team wanted to take the, the amazing abilities of jQuery, but then focus on creating a library that would be best for mobile devices. Because mobile devices have their, have their, uh, their own quirks and such, right? We have such a small screen here where we need to show a nav bar, and we need to show content, and what if the screen rotates, and all of that. So jQuery Mobile was built on top of jQuery to give us even more commands to be able to do mobile development faster. We could do everything that I'm going to talk about the old way without any jQuery or jQuery Mobile, but we're going to write 10 times more code. That's the point of these libraries, for us to write, to do more by writing less. We're going to need one more thing. These two JavaScript files, and then a CSS file for the look and feel, for the design. So next line. In this case, we're going to link to a style sheet file. Remember on day one I said we've got three ways to write CSS. We can write CSS directly on a tag, and this is one of the other ways here where it's an external CSS file. So this one is the link tag, and that one, the link tag does not have a pair. So link is not used to link between HTML files like we would have thought, where we click on a uh, a nav bar and that links us to someplace else, that's the A tag, remember? Mm -hmm. This is the link tag because this creates a link between this file and another file to use its resources in a sense. So link tag, it has some attributes. The first one is we say here link rel. What's the relationship the relationship between this file, this HTML file, and the link we're creating, rel, relationship, it's a style sheet. One word, no spaces. And then further, another attribute of the link tag then the actual link to the file, and in this case, it's not consistent, unfortunately, you just have to memorize it, href equals href, just like the a tag. Remember when we had a link between our file and my website, we wrote a href equals victor.com, so the link needs an href, and then we're going to write something very similar to the top line, line 7. HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com, just like before. Mobile slash 1.4.5 slash, just like before. jQuery dash mobile, I'm sorry, jQuery dot mobile dash 1.4.5 point min point CSS. That's the big difference there. So yes, you could have copied and pasted the previous line, but you'll learn better if you do, the, do it the hard way first.
So that line is almost the same as that line, except very important at the end, .css. And the previous one is .js, JavaScript. Let me see if I can fit this all so you can see it. It's a long line. Link, rel, stylesheet, href, and then basically the line is above the the address as above but ending in dot css not dot js or dot js dot css it's just dot css I'll explain what the dot min means a little bit later but it's been minified basically it's been compressed and made it more uh, speedy but those three lines of code Those three lines of code now will be able to now let us write a few basic things down here, and suddenly we'll have a whole page, or we will have a nav bar, or we will have an animation, or we will have um, a pop-up window, or all of that cool stuff. We won't know if this fully worked until we do a couple of lines over here, unfortunately. Ooh, so bear with me at the moment. What we want to do then is we've got a section tag, but we also want to um, it has a semantic meaning, it has a structural meaning, but visually I want it to look like a page full of content and that's where jQuery mobile comes in. So we'll go down here to the section tag and we will add a new attribute to it inside the section tag we'll add an attribute named data dash role equals quotes page so data dash role equals page in quotes What this is going to do then visually, eventually, is this will create that screen full of content mm -hmm. and only display the stuff in this header and article and footer, not the other section. And so that this will divide them, but so that we can navigate between one and another it needs a unique identifier so that when we create a link that says click here to go to page 2 it knows to go to page 2 so we need to give this an ID another attribute ID equals for the moment we'll call this page 1 we can call this anything we want we can call it kitty cat if we want but for the moment we'll call it page 1 lowercase no space on page one. No space, very important. Let's do the same thing on the other section. Let's go to the other section and add data role equals page and a unique ID. So down here on Line 31 for me, <coughs> space data dash role equals page, ID equals, what do you think? Anything we want, but we'll say page 2 for the moment. So data role has a special meaning, which we'll talk about in a moment. Save your work and run it in the web browser now. Now we can see if all of this code that we've written so far works. If it worked, you'll see this. Only the content of page 1. The content of page 2 still exists, but it's on page 2. 
I can't get to page two. I don't have any link to page two. We'll get to that. But all that I'm seeing is the content of page one. So if it worked, it should look something like this. If it didn't, you'll probably get something weird. Let's pause at this moment and make sure our code is right. Does anyone need any help? Let me pull up this part again up here. Probably the big mistake is that your, your, your top code up there is not spelled right. Let me try to make it large. Make sure it's spelled properly. Raise your hand if it worked. Okay, good. Uh, anyone need a li little help? Yes. All this code that should be hidden is not hidden, so it all kind of leads to the right place. Let's go look to where you have your style sheet to code at the very top. You you started with the tag and you closed it right away and then you closed it also. So remove that one and we'll come into the see all of that change to all colors just black and that's just a red. This is actually confusing here. It's not, notice this one, you didn't have the angle record there. It's also default. Mm -hmm. Just to confirm, <coughs> that one might have been it because I guess it kind of opened and then suddenly closed the comment and then have that. So you don't want the angle record there.
forward just a little bit more, then we'll take our, our break, you know, at about eight-ish, and then I'll help catch up a few more of you there. But I want to explore this a little bit more if it worked, because it seemed to have worked for, for most of us. So if it didn't quite work, just hold on a bit, and then we'll have a, a break very soon. But if this worked, this is, that you should feel that this is pretty revolutionary, because with uh, writing that code up here, and yes, it was a lot of code to write, but now that you've got the right code, just copy and paste it for future times. But once we've got those three lines of code that link to two JavaScript files and a CSS file, now we are able to tap into this whole library of using this little short code here, this shorthand, data role. And so I've added data role to a section and with a unique ID, and now it displays my page one content, then we'll be able to create a nav bar and with a button link to page two and do all of that. As a matter of fact, just to show you that before we get too far, let's create a button where if we click the button it takes us to page two. So we can see that our page two content is there. We're gonna create a button here. Let's go to where where we've got the section um, the first section right page one and you've got the article which is the main body of the of the document after day two we're gonna create a button here uh, well we're, let's do a basic one first we'll create a basic link 
So we'll say go to page 2. And I want to wrap an A tag around that. So some sort of anchor text, and then the A tag, which will become an active link. And we were and we saw how to make links last time. This will still work. We have the A tag and we have the attribute href equals something. And the something will be the unique identifier of page 2. Page 2 is ID'd as page 2. So we need to write it this way. You have to write the pound symbol and then the name, the ID of the other page, which is page 2. No spaces there. Now save that and run that. You should get a very basic link on page 1. Click the link and then it should show you page two. If we want to go back to page one, something very similar also. And then we'll, for the other section. And we also have some other jQuery mobile where we can click a button and it'll automatically go back for us. We'll do that later. But let's see if that worked. A href pound page two. Did that work for you? Go to page two. I'll click on that and I'm on page two. <gasps> So if I want to go back to page one, I could press back on the on the uh, web browser, but eventually think about it in terms as an app. You're not really going to be relying on the back button to navigate an app. You're going to be relying on buttons within the app to navigate. <clears throat> so let's do this and then we'll take our break. If you're stuck on page two with no way to go back, let's add a link to take us back from page two to page one. So now we're going to go over to the section of page two, data role page two. Welcome to page two, enjoy. Go back to page one. Pound symbol. Always use the pound symbol when referring to the IDs of a page because if you've got some experience in this stuff already, you might be seeing the meaning of this pound sign. If not, I'll get to it. Page one. So if I run it, I'm on page one. I click go to page two. I'm on page two. If I click on that, back to page one. Did you notice, it's pretty subtle, a very simple transition, a little fade between pages. We're about to take a break, but look at this little tease. <clears throat> that link, which just used to be a plain old underlined link, I wrote something, and now it's a button with a little hover, an animation, a glow, I'll show you this then we'll take our break. A href pound page two attribute data dash role equals button. And we've upgraded a plain old link into a button with a drop shadow and a glow and a rollover effect. And all of that is thanks to jQuery Mobile and jQuery. If we don't have jQuery Mobile and jQuery, those three files, if we wrote data role, 
it would ignore it. Nothing would happen. Those things make sense because of jQuery and jQuery Mobile. So let's take our break. Ten minutes. We'll be back at 8.15. I'll put my code in the folder. When we come back, we'll explore this even more. This is a big can of worms we're going to get into.